Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, smoking. Look, look, swearing. Look, look, talking. Look, look, because you're coming three, two, one. Bang! Welcome, everybody. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and we have a great show for you today. So, yeah, Stellar releases a key update. Bang! We're going to talk about Stellar's key update. Iota, quarter side project. Bye, I'm going to talk about it. And then finally, you promised Shamari. Yes, yes, and Shamari delivers. Settle down, brother. Settle down. China, virtual currency. Yes, we're going to talk about that Chinese virtual currency. Look, look. Oh, I'm in a good mood. Why is he in such a good mood? Well, brothers, finally happened. Finally happened. Look, if you're new around here, I used to teach the brothers a little something. A little something. You see, we've been knowing that this... Okay, so... Okay, you saw the market crash today, right? Bang! 800 down, right? Yeah, well, that's what we've been waiting for. That's what we've been waiting for. So, brothers, those who were here last year with me, this is what I was talking about. And so, for you new people, hold on, I got to calm the fuck down. I'm so happy. We're about to crush this market. Um, so, what happened is the trade war started today. This is the be official beginning was today. But we were already tariffed. Yeah, but nobody believed it was going to happen. Nobody believed, everybody believed that we were going to, you know, get a trade deal. It'll settle down. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, dude. What happened was China said, fuck this. They don't even care about talking to us right now. Huh. When Wall Street heard that, Xin Jian, Xin Jian their uh, finance minister, he's talking about we might not even go back to talk to the Americans um, until they take the tariffs off first. Fuck, never mind after. So anyways, what happened today was a little something that I used to teach the brothers that would happen. How did you know it was going to happen, Shmari? Yeah, well, I'm a market killer, fuckstick. That's how I know. So look, I used to talk to the brothers. I used to tell them a little something called risk on, risk off. Well, especially you brothers who were here last year, who remember what I was telling you. <laughs> well, today is what a risk off day looks like. Okay? I told you, flight to safety. Everyone to bonds and gold. Bang, risk off. Okay, go to Investopedia and type in risk on space risk off right it's called fl that's what what the what that's what wall street just did today they went full risk off so they took their money out of the stock market and put it into the bond market because bonds are less risky right so risk off means we are not going to do anything risky right a bag they took all their money and they brought it into the uh, into the bond market today yesterday and so that's what we've been waiting for like i've been telling the brothers here the whole time the day it starts, we're going to go risk off. So that's what happened today. The market crashed. Well, it didn't crash. I just stopped talking like an immature fucking moron. <laughs> the, the, the big boys moved their money from, uh, from risky assets to less risk to the bond market. And uh, that's where the shift of money went. And so what does this mean, Shamari? Well, this is the problem, brothers. The trade war has officially begun. This is it. This is it. Uh, this is the truth now, right? Like, now it has begun. The Chinese, they said, we're not giving a fuck. Because what happened was, right, I remember last year when I used to preach to you guys about risk on, risk off, right? I kept saying, oh, guys, when the trade war comes, you'll see what risk off looks like. You'll see what risk off looks like. You're going to see what risk off looks like, right? And then he started the trade war. He started the tariffs. But Wall Street and the big boys, they just didn't care. They kept saying, ah, uh, China... Xi Jinping and Trump, he'll figure it out. Oh, Trump is such a deal maker. He'll figure it out. He'll get us a good trade deal. He'll pull us out of it. This isn't going to be a big deal. Yeah, well, ugh. unfortunately, the Chinese, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about this trade war. They know how much it's hurting America. They think this is great shit. I told you, the guy said, we don't even have a, they don't even have a date signed for their next trade talks, for the next negotiations. And the Chinese are fine with it. Yeah. And so what really happened as well, though, I mean, why it went super killer today or yesterday, I guess, at this point, is that once Trump, once Trump, so we were supposed to put another 10 percent tariff on China, I think later this week. But then Trump pulled back. He said, no, 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 I'm going to put the tariff on, I think, December 15th. And he admitted it. He said, I'm taking the tariffs away so that this does not hurt Americans Christmas. Well, when you fucking say that, now the Chinese know that the trade war is hurting us, you idiot. 
fucking tweeting stupid motherfucker, right? Yeah, well, now when I, if I'm the Chinese now, when I go into the negotiations, I play hardball. Oh, I know you boys are hurting in America. Your fucking president just admitted it. <laughs> right? He admitted it. Like, you have to pretend, ah, we're good. This isn't hurting us. This is hurting you more than it's hurting us. But he admitted it now. So that also is what made Wall Street go, oh my gosh, because now we know that the Chinese aren't going to give in. They're not going to give in. And remember, China's a one-party system. They don't need elections. They don't, they don't have elections. So it, it, if, when this trade war hits their people, and I'm going to tell you the consequences, when this recession hits their people, yeah, those people are going to complain, but they're going to say, the Chinese government's just going to say yes. That's his, the reason you're hurting is because of American colonial, um, you know, capitalist um, attack. Yeah, that'll rally the Chinese people to their leader side. Yeah, well, here in America, when you Americans start hurting, oh, and you're about to, we all are. Well, I'm not gonna hurt. I'm gonna make a lot of money out of it, actually. But you regular folk, you're gonna start paying more for stuff. But yeah, but here is different. The Chinese know. Well, you Americans have elections, so all we have to do is put tariffs on all, like Trump. You know, they want to get rid of him. All right, if you live in Trump country right now, let me tell you something. The Chinese have a big cannon pointed right at you, and they're about to blow you away. If you live in Trump country, look, buddy. Look, look, buddy. I hope you have a real secure job because the Chinese are not playing. They don't care about coming to the table, and they are going to lace those tariffs laser-focused, bop, 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 like snipers at you because they know that Trump needs to get reelected next year. Well, if Trump is fucking with them, the best way to get him not elected is to fuck with his voters, right? Piss them off so they don't vote for him again. Yes, brothers. All right, so that's that part. But then, so finally, what does this mean, Shamari? What does it mean? It was a big crash. You'll settle down. Settle down. Settle the fuck down. Yeah, that was a stock market crash. Yeah, that affected American corporations. In other words, the market cap of America. And, okay, I'm going to be truthful about it. I mean, we're going into a recession. I told you we would. I mean... You know, that's what's going to happen with this trade war, right? And so, you know, we're going to go into recession, but only here in America and China. Yeah, if you're in the UK, who gives a shit? If you're in the European Union, fuck, this doesn't affect you. If you're in Saudi Arabia or Egypt, who gives a fuck? Mexico, who fucking cares? This is going to hurt the American consumer real hard and, uh, and American corporate under, uh, uh, um, you know, sales real hard. And uh, that's about it, though. It's going to hurt East, Co- uh, e- uh, East Asia suppliers a little bit. So they're going to feel it over there in East Asia because they do all the supply for Chinese goods. And Australia and New Zealand are going to feel a little bit of pain, too, because China is their major export hub. And so China's obviously going to be buying less goods. So what does that mean for me as the human? What that means for you? The average citizen is fuck all. You know what? You're going to pay 50 cents more for your steak at the store. Of your apples, you know, you're going to pay $50 more for your next iPhone. Oh, you're going to be paying. We're going to be paying and we're going to go into a recession. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. If you live in Trump country, you're, you're going to feel some pain. Like, especially if you work in any of these industries that are about to get tariffs by the Chinese. You know, if you're a farmhand or you kind of do that kind of farm work kind of stuff like that. Yeah, man. I mean, there are already major layoffs. That's why Trump is um, bailing out the farmers already. And so... <coughs> That's what's going to happen here. Things are going to become more expensive. And uh, yeah, it's a tax on America. Trump basically is taxing America, right? It's not much. Sure, you're going to have to pay, you know, 10 cents more for that apple. Sure, it's not much. But over time, right, it adds up. And when you expand that by all the citizens of America buying stuff, yeah, that little 10 cents, $1, $50 here, $50 there extra, it all adds up. And it takes money out of our market. Sort of weakens America. Anyway, that'll come when it comes. But as far as your life goes, look, man, it ain't going to be a big deal. So don't worry about some global crash or something like or anything like that. This is just a pussy ass little recession. But just that it's dramatic, right? When they begin. Yeah. When you see a risk off scenario. Bye. Whoa. Spooky, huh? This is what I was telling you, brothers, last year. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting for. Risk off and for this fucking trade war to finally begin. And so I know I just thought I'd talk to you at the beginning because you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, the markets, the markets. Yeah, well, make some money at it, buddy. Now, if you motherfuckers had listened to me, 
and actually gone taking the course and everything that I told you guys, you'd be trading with me tonight, making money, 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 money. Fuck, I would have done a live stream. We would have traded together. But anyways, brothers, that's what happened today. We went risk off because we are in a trade war for real. The Chinese are not giving concessions. The Chinese don't give a fuck about solving this problem. And luck, luck, it's going to hurt the American consumer. It's going to hurt American business. Now, one last consequence. Your 401k is not going to be looking pretty good. Your 401k is going to start looking pretty rough. Pretty rough. And so look, I don't know why America, what made you think hiring some fucking reality TV show host to run the greatest nation on earth, the most powerful economy and military ever assembled in the history of man, why you thought it would be good for you <laughs> to have him run this place? I don't know. I don't know what you guys are thinking. But this is what you get. You get what you pay for, people. You get what you pay for. All right, maybe next time you'll actually pick someone who's fucking competent. <laughs> you know, maybe he's done the job a little bit before, right? Instead of just playing golf at his own golf courses, right? Grabbing women by the, you know what, right? That's what you get. And you know what's amazing? This is what's so amazing. I'm going to say this one last thing and then we're going to get into our crypto. Trump was handed the greatest economy that America had seen in decades, generations. Obama gave him, remember, remember, the Dow Jones was at record levels. Yeah, Obama gave him record. The Nasdaq, remember, we reached all-time highs. Remember when we were all-time highs last year? All-time highs? That's because of the Obama economy. Right? Obama get it, got it going. And as long as Trump just didn't fuck with it, yeah, we would be roaring, roaring more. We were roaring. It was all-time highs, right? Oh my gosh. He gave him the greatest economy America has had since, you know, after World War II. And this man single-handedly destroyed it. Is destroying it. It's not over yet. I mean, it's not over. I mean, maybe they do come up with a trade deal next week. And everyone goes risk on again and we just go back to normal. I don't, doesn't sound like the Chinese are into it. But he took the, 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 the best economy that America's ever had since after World War II and has single-handedly destroyed it and is in the process of destroying it slowly. Yeah, right? This isn't a political thing. This isn't the Democrats pass some law and that's why the economy's fucking up or the Republicans pass some law and that's why the economy. No, it's one man. Just Trump. It's just Trump and his tweets that are destroying America. The Republicans have nothing to do with this. The Democrats have nothing to do with this. This has nothing to do with Congress at all. It's one man. Yeah. Yep. Look, so you get what you pay for, America. You're going to fuck and you're going to pay for it too. You're going to fucking pay for it. Literally. Like literally out of your pocket. All right. But it's not the end of the world. You're still going to have a job, a wife, a house, lovely kids and family. So settle down. And eventually, all recessions end, okay? And like I said, if you live through, if you live through the housing crash, yeah, well. The housing crash was a thousand times worse than this, so this ain't shit, all right? So, there you go. Make America great again. He took the single greatest economy we've had and single-handedly destroyed it all by himself. Oh, yeah. All by himself. All right, let's get into some crypto, though. Bye. Look, look. Trade war. Money time. Yeah. All right, let's do a little refresh. Oh, right. You're probably asking this shit. All right. Yeah, yeah. I got to say this shit. So what is that going to do to crypto to Shamari? All right. That's right. Oh, fuck. That's the whole point. I was actually started I needed to explain it to you, but then, all right, what's this going to do to crypto? Look, guys, we're in a risk-off mode, okay? Institutional money, bang, ain't coming here. No, no, what, Shamari, what, what, what? Look, what I mean is this, is that they're in risk-off mode, so their money's in bonds right now. But you have to remember this, they can't buy this shit anyways. They can't buy your V-Chain now, it's not regulated yet. They can't buy your IOTAs. It's not regulated yet. They can't buy your Cardanos. It's not regulated yet. They can't buy your hollow chains. It's not regulated yet. So even though their money is hiding off in bonds, even if we didn't have a risk-off situation right now, if everything were just normal, yeah, their money still wouldn't be here yet. So 
I guess what I'm telling you is, who gives a shit? It does nothing for us. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to be a total liar. Well, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum are regulated here. So their money can come and get that. And so what is that going to do when backed and all them come on with the futures? Yeesh. A lot less of that institutional money is going to come in that we were hoping for. But it's still going to come. And eventually, like I said, recessions end. And things will go back to normal. But plus, like I said, they can't buy our, our, our small caps anyways. So it does nothing. Just keep accumulating, keep accumulating, keep accumulating. Because what it is, we need the regulations. Once it regulate, once it's regulated and they can all come get their stuff, well, that'll be a piss off if we're still in a trade war like that. But like I said, remember the trade war is with America. This doesn't stop UK whales from coming online. This doesn't stop the European Union whales from coming online. This doesn't stop Australia, Japan, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Mexico, Brazil. Right? It's only affecting America and China economically like in a big way right so don't worry about it my money's coming crypto is just fine just fine just fine now like i said probably going to be a little less money when back comes on but so what slow money is better than no money and we're going to have a little slow money time all right so what is it going to do to crypto shamari nothing you just keep doing your job building your cryptocurrency warehouse big bang building it nice bang filling it with revenue generating product and when this blows over and these guys go risk on again, well, voila, here comes our money, all right? So look, look, all is well, all is well, nothing to see here. Bye. All right, brothers, let's do this. All is well, brothers. Look, look, brothers, let's refresh, brothers. Beesh, all right. What are we at, 9-9? Nine, nine? Hmm. Oh, shit, yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's a little risk off, brothers. I've been preaching it to the brothers since last year. Well, you guys wanted, you, you know, a lot of you guys are like, Shmori, is it really going to, one guy said to me, it really isn't going to go like, they're not going to just take the money out. That's how it works. That's how it works. What you just saw there, ah, it's risk off. There it is. Okay? What I was preaching to you guys all last year. Now you've tasted it. Welcome to the real world, brothers. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the show. All right, brothers. What are we at? Bitcoin, $9,911. Look, look. Last night we were at $10,900. So, went down about a grand. Yes. Yeah, it looks like, looks like crypto went a little risk off as well. Look, look. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Usual suspects, brothers. Look, look. Top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Binance Coin, Tether, EOS, Binance, Bitcoin SV, and Stellar. Yes. Oh, Stellar takes over the number 10. Over Monero. Oh, they're battling. All right. Look, look, brothers. Market moves of the day, brothers. Oh, 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 there's some double digits down today. Oh, the sales, brothers. Bye. Look, look. Oh, there's sales. Hold on. Single digit. Hold on. Single to double digits down. Look, look. Oh, look at this beautiful thing right here. Look, brothers. And this is what I'm telling you. And so here's a little something. It's days like today. Days like today. Risk off. These are the days you make your money. These are the days the smart money makes its moves. You buy these dips like a motherfucker right now. You buy these motherfuckers like you've never bought shit before. Look, look, brothers. <laughs> oh, hey, look at these ones. Yes, we haven't had any double digits blood reds for a long, long time since last year. All right, brothers, look, look. Single to double digits down, brothers. Oh, I didn't even refresh this before I did this. I would have even been happier. <laughs> yes. All right, brothers. It's all on sale today. Hold on. Single digits to double digits down. Single to double digits, down. Single to double digits, down. Ooh, everything's on sale. Risk off, baby. Oh, yeah, risk off. Single to double digits, down. All right. Well, I mean, obviously, everything is on sale here. So let's see who the biggest sales are. Bang! What do we got? Bang! Top 10 losing day, brothers. If you see anything on here you like, you go get it because it is on sale. Look, look. Bitcoin Gold, Walton Chain, Ontology, Steam, Elastos, BitTorrent, Bitum, Onipsco, ABBC Coin, and GX Chain. Look, look. Let's see who made money. Anybody? Hmm. All right. Top 10 winners and less losers of the day. Bang! Top 10 Icon, Clipper Coin, Komodo, Dye, Revein, Tether, 
Echo Real Estate, USD Coin, Paxo Standard, and next to ass. Let's look at total market cap today, brothers. Oh, this is going to be interesting right fucking here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep, I knew it. They went risk off. All right, so. Shit. I didn't want to have to see that, though, but. Look, brothers, got to tell you. Yeah, I hit the market. We got hit. So. All right. All right. I knew it. All right. Like I said, guys, it's not the end of the world. I mean, settle down. So we're at 259.3 on the market cap. Last night, we were at 286.3, or 0.8. So we went down, uh, what is that, 27 billion? Is that 27? Am I doing my math right? Yeah, around 26 billion, all right? Let's call it 26 billion. Now, here's the motherfucker part, though. 12 volume in the day, brothers. 71.5, brothers. Yeesh. That is a major jump from yesterday. Yesterday, we were at... 50.8 billion today we went to 20 uh, we went 71.5 billion a 20 billion dollar jump in volume and you saw what happened today the market <laughs> oh the losses were steep today losses are deep in the market that tells me that tells me that boys came and they said we're getting the fuck out of here they went risk off they went risk off today as well some of these guys in the market here and they pulled their money out hardcore. A $20 billion rise in volume today? Yeah, that shows motherfuckers came in, handled their business. They went risk off, took out their shit. Yeah, yeah. So it did hit us. It looks like we got hit. We got hit a little bit. <coughs> but like I said, guys, you know, this shit ain't regulated or anything yet anyway, man. So it's not like anything was going to explode yet. Like I've told you guys here before since last year. I'm not even considering taking out any of this crypto till Q4 next year. So, yeah, don't worry about it. All right. Look, look, brothers. Let's get some crypto, brothers. Look, look. Buy low. Stellar releases key updates as Saldo MX plans to issue an asset on Stellar Network. All right. You guys know about Stellar. Stellar, yeah, yeah, people talk about that money part, like, like a ripple thing, like where they want to move money around or whatever. But actually, Stellar does way more than that. Their network has, um, what is it, a distributed exchange on it. You can issue tokens on it. Actually, you can issue all sorts of stuff on it. Um, like you can, you can issue, um, you know, like say you want to, what, what are those, what are those ones that, you know, when, you know how they have these coins now where they want to, they want to make them that it represents a house or a car. I don't remember the name of that, but you can put that on there and stuff. So it actually does more than just like, hey, we're trying to do this money transfer. Uh, you know, it's more than just that. And so, um, so we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, what a day. What a ride. Man, let me even look at my charts. Mm, nothing yet. Yeah. I mean, the British are online, but let's get real. We're all going to wait for the. I'm pretty sure. The party's not going to start till about 8 a.m. It's right now 4.49 a.m. Probably about 8 when the Americans come online. Bang! That's when we're going to start seeing the move today. I think everyone's just waiting to see what the Americans are going to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let them get the party started. All right, brothers, look! But that's the thing about trading. And so let me tell you that, too. That's why I try to get you guys to, you know, learn to trade and stuff. Because it's times like this. All right, we're sitting here in this crypto market. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my crypto ain't making me any money. But you see, I'm a trader. So, yeah, so I'm making money now this way. Tonight. Tonight I'm going to make, I mean, I don't know how much. It depends on what the market gives me. But, you know, that's what being a trader is. That's why I tell you guys, like, you guys are always telling me, like, Shamari, oh, my gosh, this is going to crash. That's going to crash. Great. Great. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I've been waiting for. I mean, that's what I was telling you guys all last year, right? We've been waiting for the risk off moment. This is why being a trader, it's the best thing in the world. You just make money no matter what, right? If I want Africa right now is booming. Africa is flying. South Africa and Zimbabwe are all flying. Yeah, you can make money that way. Or like what just happened today. Whoa, risk off. Now you can make money long or short. Greed and fear, bulls and bears. 
When you're a trader, you make money on the upside, the downside, whatever. Right? That's the beauty. And that's why I keep trying to tell you guys, you know, learn trend trading. The trend is your friend. Oh, you want to see what trend we're about to have right now? Downtrend. <laughs> uptrend for the dollar. Uptrend for the yen. Uptrend for the Swiss franc. Downtrend for the Australian dollar. Downtrend for the New Zealand dollar. This trading is too easy right now. Right? If you just learned it, you'd be making money with me tonight, all right? So try to learn to trade, brothers. And fund an account and get ready, brothers. Look, but let's get to crypto, brothers. Look. Fuck, I just can't get my mind off the markets. I don't even give a fuck about this stupid little crypto shit right now. So look, brothers. Stellar currently ranked 11th. No, it isn't. It's 10th. We just saw it. it was it 10? Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yes, it is 10. Yes, I knew I remembered. Look. Stellar, obviously, this is when it was written. Stellar currently ranked 11th in the crypto rankings with a market cap of $1.5 billion, recently revealed development undertaken over the past month. Look. Stellar released a plethora of updates in the month of July, which included the likes of the Horizon 0.19.0 Stellar Core V11.3.0 and the Stellar Ticker version 1.10. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. All right. The community also managed to successfully reset the Stellar Network test network, which took place on July 31st at 9 UTC. Wow, aren't they clever? So look, look. In keeping with the progress, progress on the technical front, Stellar was currently being used. All right, so this is the real part. I, I don't give a name. I didn't give a fuck about the names of those things. But, I mean, if you're a Stellar lover, I mean, I guess you know what all those Stellar core and all that, all that means. I don't give a fuck about all that. As long as it works. <laughs> as long as it works. So, in keeping with the progress of the technical front, Stellar was currently being used by Saldo.mx, a platform facilitating cross-border payments in Latin America. Marco Montez Neri, co-founder of Saldo MX, recently explained that the company was issuing an asset on the Stellar network that was pegged to the Mexican peso. So, looks like a Mexican stablecoin. So he said, in order to transform how remittance works, we need this irreversibility and transparency that open ledgers like Stellar offer. Stellar is very optimized for payments. We don't need smart contracts, complex capabilities, but we need efficiency. All right. <clears throat> So personalities associated with Stellar were also active as Denel Dixon, the CEO of the Stellar Development Foundation, released a Medium post about blockchain policy. Ow. Gives a fuck. Anyway, let's just read it. In her article, Dixon spoke on a collective basis for blockchain and virtual assets and indicated that currently there was a confusion, misinformation, and concern regarding using blockchain and crypto for payments. She said... We want to help clear up confusion and alleviate concerns through engagement with the ecosystem policymakers and regulators alike. Oh, okay, talking to the politicians and the regulators, I see. Oh, to clear up their confusion. All right, good idea. Yes, please. Yes. For us, success would be a shared understanding about the application of existing rules and a clear idea of where new rules may be necessary. Good girl. All right, look, look. Stellar. All right, you got your stuff. What'd you get? You released your Horizon. Bang. The Stellar Core. But Hold on, let me bang it even. You got Horizon. Whoop, whoop, slow down. You got, whoop, slow down. We got Horizon. Oh, they're not letting me bang it proper. Start from this end. You got the Stellar Ticker. Bang. You got the Stellar Core. Bang. And you got the Horizon. Bang. Yes. <laughs> and you've got Saldo MX going to use Stellar for cross-border payments. And not only are they going to use them for the payments, but they're going to issue, what were they going to issue again? Ah, a coin Bang! Peg to the Mexican peso. So Stellar upgrading. Bang! Onboarding. Bang! Mexico peso in. Bang! All right. Good stuff, Stellar. Good stuff. Look, look. Good stuff. All right. IOTA. Bang! Releases 5 million grant for potential developers of Cortisite Project. Boom! IOTA, you know I love me some Tangle. <laughs> yeah. Love me some Tangle, boy. Infinite scalability. Quantum proof. Look, look. I know. Why do you always get so happy? I don't know. I love the quantum proof thing. I love the fact that this powerful machine is going to come and fuck stuff up, but these guys are already quantum proof, right? Cardano's about to do that. The Shelly upgrade is going to make Cardano quantum proof. Yeah, man, I like it. These blockchain guys are getting ready already. <laughs> I know it's a stupid little techie thing, but I like it, right? We're already going to be protected from those. Those quantum machines, <coughs> fuck, hackers are going to have a field day with that shit. Fucking field day. All right, but you know I love me some Tangle. That's what I order runs on. Runs on a Tangle. It's not on a blockchain. 
This Tangle is infinitely scalable. No scalability issues. Infinite transaction speeds. No transaction problems. And like I said, quantum proof. It makes blockchains look like pfft, your, old, your old grandma's computer. Look, look. So let's see what these boys are talking about. I mean, plus, I mean, the most important part, the tech is really great, but <laughs> onboarded clients, United Nations, Jaguar, Audi, uh, fuck, we read a whole bunch of them last week. <laughs> I don't even remember them all. Fujitsu, uh, uh, Microsoft. Um, who's that? That one company wants to make them the standard of IoT. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's what I give a fuck. I mean, I like the tech. But I mean, if no one was using it, I really wouldn't give a fuck about it, really. <laughs> but the Tangle's making money. That's why I care. You know, if the Tangle didn't make money, I'd be like, yeah, well, great nerd, but who gives a shit. But it makes money. And that's what matters around here. Revenue generation, brothers. We're all about revenue generation around these parts. Yeah. So, there is an air of inevitability when it comes to Bitcoin's domination in the crypto space. None of the virtual assets in the industry are able to compete with Bitcoin when the comparison is taken from the financial standpoint. However, whoops, so, hence, most of the altcoins have to take the route of technological innovation. Well, all of them do when you talk about um, IOTA Protocol, a DLT developed by the IOTA Foundation, is trying to raise their stock up a notch in the industry after recently announcing the introduction of Cortiside Solution. The objective of Cortiside Run parallel to IOTA's vision of permissioned and scalable DLT. At press time, it was revealed that IOTA had initiated a grant of $5 million for potential developers willing to contribute <laughs> contribute <coughs> to the Cortiside project. When Cortiside was released in May 2019, it was suggested to be calculated a calculated upgrade for IOTA which would assist the network in the removal of the network's centralized coordinating node. Yes, that's what everyone was complaining about. The dismissal of the node has been indicated to be crucial to the network due to its centralized nature. The current node system can independently prioritize transfers, free funds, and is also has identified as a singular point of failure. All right, so look, according to IOTA, the grant was also valid for research-related areas, which included spam prevention, attacks on IOTA protocol, reputation system, on node behavior, decentralized, random number generation, etc. So bang. All right. So they upgraded with some new protocol, reputation, blah, 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 the system and the nodes and this and this and this. All right. Look, look. I had a new nodes, new stuff. Good for you. Bang. Let's get some money though. Fuck. Okay. I got to get the fuck out of here and make this cash. Look. China Central Bank announced completion of virtual currency after meticulous planning since 2014. These motherfuckers have been, they've been back there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just brewing this motherfucker up. Yes. I just, just cooking the soup back there, all quiet like. Yeah, not telling anybody. <laughs> they're banning it. They're talking shit about it. Yeah, yeah. But they're cooking their own soup. Yes. Yes. Right? They're telling everybody soup sucks. Yes, but they got a big old pot. <laughs> big old pot cooking. Look, look, China. Sneaky. Sneaky. Fuck. Right? <laughs> of completion. Oh, that's So, the, like the Bitcoin story the other day, the one where... What the fuck? Bitcoin used for a cross-border? Right? It slapped me in the face. I was just like, what the fuck? I never even heard of anyone doing it. That's what this story did. Sort of slapped me. And that's like, it's one thing to say, yeah, China's developing one. It's another one to be like, yeah, yeah, it's finished. What? What? You've been banning and talking shit about crypto for the past three years? And you've been brewing one up the whole time? This is what I mean. This, this is why we watch these motherfuckers. This is why we watch. If you're new here, you're probably wondering, why is this motherfucker always reading government shit? Why is he always reading regulatory shit? Why did he read to me about some crypto? Well, I just gave you two crypto stories. Right? Why, does he, why, is he, why is he always talking about government stuff? This is the shit. This is the shit I'm talking about. <laughs> you got to watch these motherfuckers. They say one thing. They yap, yap, yap here, but they're doing fucking full on other shit over here. That's why we watch them, brothers. We got to watch our money. Or I'll watch the guys who control it, like who are going to make it come, right? That's probably why. Like, If you're watching this channel, this motherfucker hardly even talks about cryptocurrency. He's always talking about ETFs, and he's always talking about the SEC, and he's always talking about the politicians. <laughs> I know, because that's what makes crypto. If 
Fuck, there's not going to be a crypto market unless we're regulated. There's not going to be a fucking crypto market unless the politicians fucking release this shit. There's not going to be one. I don't give a fuck. All these, I owe all of that. I mean, those guys are still going to be businesses. But in terms of investors coming in and driving up our prices, there's not going to be a fucking market for it until these guys make it. And that's why we watch that. The crypto part, that's easy. Just buy fucking shit that's making money, man. That's the, that's the easy part. Yeah, is it generating revenue? All right, go buy it. You know, the hard part is, fuck, when are we going to get our regulations? Fuck, when are these guys going to vote? That's probably, I know, if you're new, you know, you're probably, what the fuck, man? I like this guy's show or whatever, but fuck, he never hardly talks about crypto. <laughs> fuck the crypto. What do I have to say about crypto? Buy revenue generating product, put it in your warehouse. Bang! There's your crypto talk. <laughs> that's all that's necessary. All right, guys, but, uh, but, oh, so like I was saying, yeah, I couldn't, when I saw this, I was just like, get the fuck completion. Like, that's the part. If it said something like, you know, oh, you know, oh, China is looking into develop, uh, um, you know, a central bank coin or something. All right. A lot of, actually, a bunch of countries are. Even India. Speaking of India, man, I don't think India's coming on board. Doesn't look like India's coming on board. They, uh, they, well, they had a court case today. So remember, we're waiting for the, the court to rule on whether the, whether the, the, the Indian regulators are allowed to ban crypto. So they went into court today, well, yesterday, I guess now, and um, it's, 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 it's these guys against RBI, that's the Royal, the, the Royal Bank of India, the Central Bank of India. So they took the Bank of India to court. So they went into court yesterday, and um, <clears throat> so the guy, um, the, the, the plaintiffs, the, the, the guy who's for, the lawyer for the crypto people, he showed the he showed the judge he showed the judge what the G20 is doing. He showed the judge the 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 different ways that a, the crypto was being regulated in different countries, with Japan and South Korea, and the UK. Um, uh, and um, what else did he say? But the the main point. But what happened in today's court hearing? The main thing that really was good was that every which everybody is talking about is that the judge asked the the lawyer, hey. What is New York doing about crypto? Yes. The judge asked that. The judge asked the lawyer, right? The lawyer is telling, talking about all oh, the G20 and this and this. This is what this country does. This is what that country does. And the judge said, hey, hey, what are the regulations in New York? Bye. <clears throat> the judge knows. The judge knows. He knows. He knows. Oh, I mean, obviously, this is pure speculation. I mean, one sentence out of a whole court hearing isn't. You know everything, but it's good news that the judge realized he wanted to know what are New York's crypto regs. Yeah, and so next week, I think it's next Tuesday, they go back to court, and I'll give you a little update then. That's a good thing. I almost forgot that today. Yeah, so they went to court today for that. But it doesn't, so what I want to say about the India thing, though, yeah, man, I mean, what it is is they're taking the, the Central Bank of England to court because the central bank is the one banning crypto. You're not allowed to do that. The politicians have to ban the crypto. You're not allowed to ban the crypto. Right? And that's what these guys are telling the judge. No, Your Honor, the central bank isn't allowed to ban this. It has to be through the politicians to vote. And you see, that's the argument, right? Because the RBI came out and just was like, oh, we're going to ban it. But it's not your job to ban it. Right? And that's why the crypto guys took them, took them to court. Yeah, that's in this. This is in the. This is the Indian Supreme Court they're in right now. So, like here in America, we have the Supreme Court. Yeah, these guys are in the Supreme Court of India, arguing for crypto right now, telling the judge, "Yo, Your Honor, this motherfucker is not allowed to ban crypto. It, not that crypto can't be banned, but just those guys aren't the ones to do it. The politicians have to vote and ban it if they want to. So, this ban that's happening right now, Your Honor, shouldn't even be applied." Because it's an illegal, oh, that's what it was. Yes. He straight up told the judge what they did was illegal, Your Honor. This is illegal. They don't have the authority to ban this. Yep, that's the argument. What they did was illegal. If you want to ban it, you make the politicians vote. But, Your Honor, until the politicians vote, crypto should be legal. Look, and this is the Supreme Court of India. So, you know, just like here in America, whatever the Supreme Court rules, well, that's the law of the land, motherfucker. That's the law of the land. So that's kind of good about India. If, I mean, if they win the case. Because if they win the case, well, the ban is lifted. The ban's lifted. It's a legal act. I mean, it doesn't mean the politicians won't ban it, but just saying, 
Well, at least it won't be banned for a second. All right. So that's what happened at court in India today. All right. Back to China. Oh, yeah. These sneaky motherfuckers, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, just sitting there brewing up. Right? Just brewing a witch's brew back there, huh? It's a big old pot of soup, not telling anybody. Yeah. What's going on back there, China? Nothing. Nothing's going on back here. <laughs> you good? Soup. What soup? We hate soup. <laughs> what cryptocurrency? We hate crypto. We're banning it. It's horrible. Yeah, and they're back there just brewing it up. Oh, they're just brewing up. It's a big old batch. It's a big old batch of crypto. Look, look, brothers. Let's see what China's got serving up in the crypto world. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Because, okay, we'll talk about this. Hold on. So, Mu Changchun, uh, Deputy Chief of the Payment and Settlement Division of the People's Bank of China, recently announced at the Third China Finance 40 Hishuan uh, Forum that the development period of China's Bank of China's PBOC digital currency was near completion. And it was, and I quote, this is the People's Bank of China Deputy Chief, okay? So, you know, the next head guy down. He said, said to be ready. Said to be ready. This motherfuckers have been brewing up crypto. Whole time. Whole time. That's why we watch them. That's why we watch them, brothers. <clears throat> Don't let them get by us. Sneaky sons of bitches. That's why we watch them around these parts. Look, look. Chang Chan also revealed that the central bank's virtual asset would be operated and established on a two-tier structure. In order to deal with China's massive economy, resource endowment, and vast population. As you know, why does this guy always talk about China? Look, look, if you're new. Look, one in people in the world are Chinese. One in what sorry, one in five people in the world are Chinese. One in five people on earth are Indian. Yeah. Oh yeah, the rest of us that we're just sprinkled in. We're just sprinkled in. <laughs> China and India, they have one point something billion people in each country. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So I want you to understand the importance, and that's why anytime China does anything, I'm gonna talk about it here because <laughs> it's huge. All right. Man, I'm in a good mood. Look. All right, what are we talking about here? Two-tier system. Right. All the massive economy. Yours. So Chang Chun said, for the perspective of improving accessibility and increasing, in, and, okay, all right, let me slow down because this is actually important. So, hold on. Yeah, let me slow down. so from the perspective of improving accessibility and increasing public willingness to use a two-tier operational framework should be adopted to deal with this difficulty. Right? They want them to use it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't build it for nothing, but, and and this is what I'm trying to say, to, what I want to say is, and that's why when I say China is going to come online in crypto, they're coming. You don't give infographics, remember I read to you, the state-owned bank giving infographics to its citizens about how about, about Bitcoin, how to buy it and all this. Remember I showed you the state-owned news agency showing the people, what was that that they showed them again? But anyway, about Bitcoin and stuff. I remember every single month they come out with those 37 projects that they rank. Remember that ranking thing? That you don't do that unless you're going to give your people crypto. You don't do that. You don't do that. And so they're giving it. Crypto is coming. And I, I think maybe what they're doing is they're going to be like, okay, let's roll out our crypto first so it dominates the market. And then we'll allow the people to invest in stuff like that. But China is coming on board, people. China's coming on board. And that's what I love. That's what I love. That's what I love. As, you, as well as you should. One in five people on earth are Chinese, brothers. Well, that's a lot of whales over there. And that's a lot of new money, too. So, you know, a lot of the young kids over there, they have a lot a lot of, you know, young young yuppies. What are called yuppies? You know, young urban professionals. Oh, yeah. They got a little bit of disposable income now. You know, and, you know, China's booming, obviously. And so... There's a lot of disposable income. Some of that might come our way. All right. That's a bunch of speculation, but it will. China's digital currency roadmap. So it's no secret that China has been developing its own digital currency for almost five years now. That was a secret to me. I didn't know that. As the digital currency research group was formed way back in 2014, it was believed that a digital renminbi, told you the renminbi, that's the name. Renminbi is the name of Chinese money. They always say the yuan. That's not the name of their money. It's renminbi, okay? But I don't know. They use them both. It's weird. So anyways, it was believed that a digital renminbi, 
that is easily acceptable would be highly useful to facilitate trade with companies in the country. One of the major advantages that play directly in China's hand is the familiarity of population with cashless payments. Now, remember that, brothers, last year? So last year I showed the brothers, there was an article in the newspaper, and um, it, I think it's a New York Times reporter, and she went to China and tried to live in Beijing for one week with just cash. Just cash. Google it, it's some, something like My Week in China with Cash or something. Right, there's two articles. You'll see a CNBC lady did it, and uh, a, a New York Times reporter did it. Yeah, <clears throat> she tried to live in China, uh, in Beijing, with just cash. Look, look, people were looking at her like she was crazy. <laughs> yeah, she went to McDonald's to go pay in cash. They were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah, there's the fucking machine. Tap your fucking shit. Yeah, in the in the article we had, there's a homeless guy. Yeah, he had a QR code. Yeah, you want to donate to the homeless man? Beep. Scan his QR code. That's how deep it is. The homeless have digital app, digital payments. Yeah, there was a picture of it. I'm not bullshitting you. Google that. Trying to, I tried to live in China for a week or something. It's called like that. Fuck. I used to have it on my old laptop. I'd have posted it to the fucking comments tonight for you. But my old laptop, it's the broken one, so I didn't get the shit out of the hard drive yet. So, yeah. And, uh, and so what I'm trying to say is that's how... Um, what this guy says is one of the major advantages that play directly in China's hand is the familiarity with the population with cashless payments. Yeah, man, they are fully familiar. They are fully familiar, right? Like the lady, she tried to pay for a taxi with the cash. The cab driver was like, lady, I don't have fucking money. What's fucking wrong with you? Are you fucking stupid? <laughs> I'm sure you didn't say it that forcefully. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I'm sure that's what he was thinking in his head. I gave you the, the Shamari Clark translation of what he was saying. So look, so that's why this will be adopted easily because they use cash, I mean, sorry, they don't use cash hardly already. You know, if you go out to the countryside and shit, yeah, but the city kids uh, and people, that's already common. Just boop, 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 tap your phone, boop, 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 all around. What do they got? We pay, this pay, that pay, beep, 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 Ali pay, beep, 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 beep. Talk about in China, beep, bipping. They're just beep, bipping. They don't pull out cash, beep, beep. That's how they roll. Look. So, hence, the country is already in a strong position for widespread adoption of computer. Exactly. And that's why <clears throat> these people are going to feel so familiar. It's not when they when, when China finally does allow their, their citizens to come get this crypto. Yeah, it's not going to be a big deal. They're like, okay, another thing. Like, like when America finally lets America get it. Americans are going to be, oh, what is this? I don't understand. I pay with how? How do I do it? I got to tap this. Gotta, yeah, Chinese people are beep, beep. They're already ready. <laughs> look, look, brothers. Oh, you want mass adoption? Well, there ain't no bigger mass than the Chinese. One in five on earth, buddy. Well, that's a mass. That's a mass of people indeed. Look, look. Although the PBOC was developing a versatile asset since 2014, the central bank had no desire to imitate Bitcoin. Unlike Bitcoin, the digital currency developed by the country would be completely centralized and controlled through lit thoroughly by the government, obviously. In 2016, Xiao... Xiao, Xiao So Chun, and then governor of PBOC, <clears throat> announced the use of the virtual asset in the currency was inevitable. Once it is unveiled, bang, they're going to use it. However, he emphasized that it would not immediately replace fiat. The governor also famously stated that a virtual asset would reduce operating costs, increase efficiency, and enable a wide range of new applications. All right. So... Uh, the, I mean, yeah. I guess they'll still technically have cash money, but all right. One second here, brothers. So, <clears throat> besides developing a digital asset, China was also equally involved in blockchain technology as the country was overseeing blockchain platform for securities trading. Um, in August 2018, China Securities Depository Clearance Corporation came into a partnership with Sengsan Bank of Shanghai, announced a 66 million blockchain-based asset-backed securities. It is reported that the bank completed the issuance <clears throat> 
on August 17th and became one of the first institutions in China to initiate an issuance over a blockchain network. All right, whatever. I mean, China's always been with blockchain. I knew China was with blockchain. I knew about that. I did know about the 2004 blockchain thing, that they were with it, but I didn't know they were building their own currency. But yeah, in 2014, China had already, everybody knew that. <clears throat> Moreover, January 2019, Yao Kang, former head of PBOC's Digital Currency Research Group, released a detailed article about the advantages of blockchain, Bitcoin, and the futures of technology in China. Yeah, so look, look. That's what I'm saying. Here come the Chinese. Here come the Chinese. They're going to roll out their currency first. They're going to roll it out. Remember, we just read it. Right? I, t I mean, we read it from last year. You know, the brothers, you guys remember. But if you're new, I told you, go get that article and read it. Yeah, the reporters, they try to live in China with cash. People are looking at them like they're crazy. <laughs> you know, she said that she said the the, the girls, the the, 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 what did she say? The girl at the McDonald's, like, like shook her head and called over some other employee or something when she pulled out cash. <laughs> and the manager was like, ma'am, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah. And so they're already ready to go. They're good to go. Read that article. It's called, like, literally, that's the name of the article. It's something like, I tried to live in China on cash for a week or trying to live in China with cash for one week. And there's two articles. You'll see, if you Google it, there'll be a CNBC article and the New York Times one is the one I like. But she gets into it. Like, she shows you how her day was. Lock, lock. <laughs> they were looking at her like she was, I'm like a caveman or something. <laughs> you know, everyone was just like, what are you wrong with you, lady? So check that out. China's ready. China's coming. Look, look. Digital currency. Bang. Here comes the crypto. And they're going to bring the crypto. I told you, you don't tell your people about 37 cryptos every month if you're not going to give it to them. China's going to roll out their own central bank crypto. Boop, boop, get it mingle around. Get it, get it, get it getting used by the population. Then they're going to let crypto roll out. Yeah. So then they're going to let their people invest in crypto and just have a good old time. So look, look, brothers. All is great on the China front. All right, brothers. Let's get shout outs. Look. Bye. Whoop. What we got? Notifications. Who's talking? What do we got? DP. Look, look. Bang. See you, brother. Love your brother. Bye. Yeah. What's he talking about? SEC guidance gives ammo to lawsuit claiming XRP is an unregistered security. Oh, poor little Whipple lovers. I know. Oh, man. Whipple lovers took a beat down this week. Oh, they're taking a beat down. And what happened is, let's talk about, you want to talk about Ripple a little bit? Watch this. So this lawsuit, the Ripple lawsuit. So what Ripple did was... <clears throat> Ripple got sued in California court under a class action lawsuit. Class action means multiple people are suing them at once, but they put it in one case. It's called class action lawsuit. So they're under a class action lawsuit. And so what Ripple did was they tried to get, they tried to get their, this case taken out of the California courts and put into our federal court system because the federal court system is more favorable to the argument that they're making. Well, they made a fucking bad mistake. Because, uh, I mean, I'm not talking about this SEC guidance bullshit, but I'm going to just tell you about the court case. The guys who came with the class action lawsuit, they put in an amended of filing, and they put in SEC, um, oh, what, the, what was that called? They put in the SEC guidelines. SEC came out with guidelines this year? Yeah. So they put in SEC guidelines. Well, a federal judge will read the federal SEC guidelines. Hey, look, look, Garling House. Look, look. You got to answer. And so... Garling House and the boys, they didn't have to answer. The judge told him, next month, you're coming fucking right in front of here and you got to prove yourself. Oh, yeah, buddy. We're going to read about Garling House and the boys in court next month. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But they fucked themselves by bringing themselves to federal court because the California courts are more strict. I mean, sorry, that's not the way to say it. Hold on. Let me say it a better way. Um... Anyway, I, it's hard to explain. Just the California courts, um, you know, according, you know, look, man, just fuck all that. I, I can't get into all that. My brain's not working right here. But by bringing it to federal court, Garling House and them fucked themselves because now they have to answer. When this guy amended it and showed 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 the judge the new stuff yesterday, or I was the yesterday, I think it was two days ago. Well, that judge was like, yeah, you boys are coming in here to answer for this shit. So look, look, and that's the problem. If Ripple is, is, is classified as a security by this judge, well, that's it. The whole XRP project is over. You can't, you know, a bank, 
a security is a stock, right? It's a stock. You know, like like you buy a Facebook share, a share, a stock. Yeah, well, banks can't transfer money with stocks, can they? If it's classified as a security, that's the end of the whole XRP project. The whole money transfer thing. That's it. That's it. But that's good for Ripple lovers. If Ripple becomes a stock, you Ripple lovers will make money because um, if it's classified as a stock of Ripple Labs, then you have a stake in the money that Ripple Labs is making. The way Garlinghouse has it right now, you guys own this thing called XRP. Yeah, but it's not connected to a company. You have no stake in anything. It's like as if you bought a Facebook share, but then Facebook is like, yeah, but you don't own a stake in Facebook. <laughs> That's just some other crazy little thing I made. So <clears throat> as a Ripple lover, <clears throat> in terms of your money, you want to be a security. So you have, you have stake in Ripple Labs. All the money Ripple Labs makes going forward, you have stake in. Now, the problem is, if it is labeled as security, well, that whole XRP money transfer thing, it's over. So you have to pick your poison. If they, if they say it's not a security, all right, XRP thing will work, but you have no stake in it. You're just a holder of this crap, this money transfer crap. It's not connected to any company. So there's nothing to it, right? But if you, it's a security, well, you are going to have stake in Ripple Labs with Judge Generate Revenue. Yeah, but the whole XRP project is over in terms of the money transfer part. Now it's just a stock of security. So interesting stuff, and that's what happened uh, the other day. Yeah, man, Garlinghouse and them, they brought it up to federal court. They fought and fought and fought to get it out of the California court. They brought it to the federal court. And then homeboy the other day said, yeah, your honor, bang, look what the SEC says. Bang, look at this stuff. And the judge was like, really? Well, look here, Garlinghouse. You boys better come in here and answer some questions. So bang, I'll keep you posted on that. Look, look. You follow court cases and everything. Yeah, you fuck sticks. That's why I'm smart money, baby. Look, look, Justin DeLavina. See you, brother. Bye. Look, look. So we got new new follower, Bitcoin Street XYZ, top crypto and altcoin news and info. Bye. Good to see you, buddy. Look, look, who we got? Tron Lounge DTL, Twitter page of Tron Lounge DTL. Tron Lounge, the future of blockchain marketing today. Bye. All right, Tron lovers. You know I love you guys. Friendly bunch. Boom. Good to be here, brother. All right. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Who's this guy? It's got Radiance. Radiance, real-time tracking. The smart choice and actionable intelligent for fitness, corrections, healthcare, and more. Bang! All right. Look, look. Arge. Bang! Good to see you again. Haven't seen you for a little bit. Bang! See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang! What's this guy talking about? Remy. Oh, this meta hash thing. What's everyone talking about this for? I've seen a few people sort of getting hyper about this meta hash thing. First of all, let me give you a bang, Remy. But let's read. A meta hash is a cryptocurrency cryptocurrency with its own blockchain validation rates under three seconds can you beat that oh, whatever <laughs> i don't know buddy look back moon landing oh here's the usual suspects love your brother see you wait where is he where's his face love your brother see you brother bye sweetie man she's been working hard she hasn't even talked to me for a few days look look stallion the fabulous the wonderful the glorious Blockchain stallion. Bye. See you, girl. Love you, girl. Bye. Yes. Look, look. Poppy Wood. Bye. Oh, Poppy scared the fuck out of me again. Fucking Poppy. Stop doing that, man. <laughs> he said, I go on Binance again and they're not letting me get my money. Fucking freaking out. All right, Poppy. You know I love you, though. Bye. But just test it a little bit first before you come on the Twitter and scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Please, brother. Have mercy on me, brother. Have mercy. All right, Benny, I'm love your brother, see you, brother. Bye. We got crypto Indians updating Bitcoin cryptocurrencies, headlines, crypto news, Bitcoin news, blockchain news, trends, the future of money, Facebook, bang. Yes. All right, buddy. <laughs> oh, Stallion, what'd she say? Okay, BTC, totally didn't see that one on the horizon. I know, right, girl? Shit. That's why I did that story because, I mean, it doesn't make us money or anything, but just never even heard of people talking about like bitcoin for a fucking bank i mean i whole i thought the whole point of bitcoin was to get around the banks yeah i'm going to be my own bank i'm going to be my own sovereign bank and all this kind of fantasy talk right well it's not fantasy i mean if you want to put your money in bitcoin you would be your own bank that'd be a stupid move to do but look it's true you could do it <laughs> that's why i read that one 
<coughs> that blew my <coughs> that blew my brain away, man. That blew my brain away. Ripple cross border payments, stellar. Yeah, we'll see how that all goes. Competition. That's how it goes. Look, look. No, Bella Tech. Blockchain open science ecosystem with free tools, services, cryptocurrency for scientists. Oh, smarty pants people. Launching security token offering. No, right. No, Bella Tech. Bang. Thank you for coming. See you. Oh, man. <laughs> Master Barber Magazine. Bang. Love your brother. See you, brother. Bang. And he said, yes. Bye-bye, Ripple lovers. <laughs> SEC is bringing the Thor's hammer against Ripple. Yes. And that's that SEC thing. Um, and man, I mean, Ripple's in a hot, hot, a whole bunch of trouble right now. That that whole thing is all fucked up. You can just fuck all that. Uh, Barney Lonis, Chief Digital, Humi, what? Anyway, whatever. Brand marketing, digital strategy, digital formation, future work. I run a mom and drink. One and uh, all right, bang, bang, all right, sir. Yes, sir. All right. There's a lot of stuff in there. Look, look. TV, HIEC chair. Chair Thames Valley Health Innovation and Education Cluster. Supporting, adopting, and spread of healthcare. Best practices in the NHS. Yeah, you mother. Oh, so first of all, bang, see you. But there's a two of you did this. The IoT, yeah, Binium and this guy. I guess they think it's a big I mean, I guess maybe it is a big deal. I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, me, I love my, you know, I love me some Internet of Things. I think that's why they sent it to me. <laughs> look, look, one last one, guys. Javier Garcidias. Bang, see you, brother. Look, look. Boom, look, look. Boom, look, look. Boom. Yes, welcome. Well, man, today we had a fucking great day. We finally got our trade war. Bag! We finally got the risk off we needed. Bag! We are going to make some major money. I know, that's not the crypto stuff. All right, let's take it with crypto. Holy, finally. Because, guys, if you're new here, you probably don't know. Like, I was telling these guys about this trade war for so long. I was like, oh, guys, man, there's going to be a thing called risk on, risk off. It's going to crash. You know, the bonds are going to go up and blah, blah. Right? I mean, that's how it works. And so I was telling everyone, but these motherfuckers just wouldn't start the fucking party right they kept trusting oh don't worry they're gonna come to a trade deal oh don't worry trump will figure it out oh don't worry the chinese in america they're not really gonna want to clash it's too much money they're not really gonna want to have a trade war <laughs> the chinese today said look we don't give a fuck about no trade war if you want a trade war we'll have one. Oh shit now trump's a bitch oh shit trump thought he could just talk some shit and scare them into fucking doing what he says they're like yo fuck you <laughs> Go fuck yourself, little reality TV man. You can go fuck yourself with all that. Yeah. And when they heard when Wall Street heard that, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> look, look. Look, look, look. And I'll tell you what happened today. All the hedge fund managers went in the office today. So a hedge fund, you have what's called trading desks. So a trading desk is like, I don't know, you got like five, ten guys trading bonds. You got five, ten guys trading stocks. You got five, ten guys trading futures. You got but like, I mean, for a small hedge fund, I mean, the mega guys obviously have hundreds of guys trading Forex, hundreds of guys. Trading. But in a, like, I'm just talking about maybe like a, you know, like a killer murderer type guy hedge fund. Yeah, he's got about 30 guys on about five different what's called trading desks. I'll tell you right now what happened today. The hedge fund manager went or yesterday went in that office, said, we're going to risk off. Liquidate, liquidate, liquidate. Get us out of everything. Sell, sell, sell. And they liquidated everything. Went right into those bonds. Yeah, look at the bond yields. Shrank. Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, it means you're so desperate, we're not even going to pay you hardly anything. We're going to shrink those yields way down because that's how desperate we know you are. And that's what they did. They ran out. They said, sell, sell, sell everything. Flight to safety, risk off, risk off, risk off. So risk on and risk off. Bang. And that's what they told their, they told their traders. We're going risk off, boys. Liquidate everything. Get us into bonds. Let's get to safety. Bang! And that's what you saw today. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing to watch, isn't it? Beautiful. I told you it was going to happen. Yeah. Eventually. Fuck, they finally got around to it. So look, time to make money, brothers. And it's not going to affect our crypto, so don't worry about it. And all right, let's move on then. Look, look. Stellar releases key update. Bang! They got the version this of that. 
and the version that of that and the version that of that. But the other thing was that that one, what was it? The one company is going to release, what was that? What was it? A peso stable coin. Oh, and use them for the money transfer thing, right? So, yeah, there we go. They onboarded a client. They released a bunch of updates. And, uh, yeah, you know. Moving forward, all right, IOTA, quarterside project. So, actually, once I read it, I was like, why am I reading this? Because it wasn't such a big deal. But, I mean, I guess there were upgrades. Like, what they did was they paid guys, and then the guys upgraded the shit. And so, that's what I was trying to say. But I thought they were going to talk about the upgrades throughout the story. They just said it right at the very end. But, anyways, IOTA, bang, upgraded, bang, great. And then China, one in five on Earth, brothers. One in five. That's how it goes. Look, look, China's not playing games. They're already digital. I told you, go read that article. Trying to live in China for a week on cash or using cash in China for a week or something like that, it's called. Like, it's a long name like that. So don't think like I'm, you know, just saying that. Like, that's really the, actually the name of the title of the story. Something like that. Like, I tried to live in China for a week on cash, with cash or something it's called. And there's two articles. There's a CNBC article and the New York Times one. The New York Times one, that's the fucking funniest one. That is a homeless man. Hey, he's got a QR code. He's got a cardboard with a big white piece of paper with the QR code on it. Yo, yo. And I told you, the lady went to go pay for her fucking McDonald's. They were like, what are you doing? Yeah, she tried to pay for a taxi. The dude was like, lady, what is that? <laughs> Cash? What's that? Not, nah, I mean, obviously, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. So what I'm trying to say, though, is they're super, super, super digital. Read that article if you don't believe me. And uh, and you brothers know who were here. I, I did post it once to the comments because I was so like, wow. And so, um, yeah, guys, China is coming. China is coming. What I think they're going to do, they're going to give their little digital currency first. And then they're going to let the Bitcoin and everything, while well, the 37 that they rate as the good blockchains, I think they're only going to let those. Like ICOs, white papers and shit, fuck all that. China's not going to let that happen. But if it's revenue generating and working product, China will let their uh, their citizens invest in working revenue generating product. And that's what I see coming out, which is fine, which is fine. Well, especially for us, because, well, if you're here with me, well, you should just have revenue generating products. So no, great. You know, I don't give a shit if they don't invest in that fucking white paper over there. <laughs> I don't own that kind of crap. All right. And neither should you. Look. All right. So China's coming. They're coming. And they were so sneaky. Sneaky motherfuckers. Building their own fucking crypto. But look. You got good surprises and you get bad surprises. When it comes to markets in the goodie room. Look. And this one right here. Oh, this is one of the best surprises we could get, brothers. China coming with their own crypto. Oh, you know they're going to release the rest. They're going to allow their, their 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 citizens to to play with the rest of this stuff. So, man, this is the best news we could get. Well, especially after a day like risk off. Well, I mean, it's good. It's a good day for me. <laughs> but you know, anyway. So look, brothers. All right, it's chilling. Kill. Let's get you back to watch live. Bang! Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get automatic notifications when the greatest show on earth comes on. Yes. You probably want to know that. Look, look, my name is Shamar Clark. I love talking money, love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. Now, well, brothers, so look, it's been a great time. And thank you for having me in your home. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll be back at it, making our money. And look, look, don't let this trade war fuck with you. It's not going to do anything to our crypto. Remember, this trade war is going to affect China and America. If you're in England, pff, doesn't have a problem with you. If you're in Europe, pff, no fucking problem. You know, if you're in Mexico, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, anywhere, it's not going to hurt you. So just keep accumulating. The job hasn't stopped. The tsunami has not been stopped. We are all systems go. You just continue doing your job. What's my job, Shamari? Your job, worker B, is to take that paycheck you get every two weeks, take a little money out, and you buy a working product, and you put it in a cryptocurrency warehouse. Bang! And you build that cryptocurrency warehouse big. Bang! And you build it fat. Bang! And you put working, revenue generating product in there. You just keep doing what you're doing. You don't worry about what's going on in that stock market. That has nothing to do with you. 
It's nothing to do with you. This recession it ain't got nothing to do with you. Don't worry about all that. You just keep building that warehouse big. You keep building that warehouse nice. You keep building that warehouse strong. Because nothing is going to stop crypto. And that's what I want you to get. I don't give a fuck all these kind of shits. Fucking this recession, that recession. Wait till Brexit happens. Let's see what that's going to happen. <laughs> that's going to be some fun times to trade. You know? So don't worry about it. All right? We are rip-roaring ahead. And, uh, you know, don't let sort of crazy websites or something scare you. Yeah, remember, remember, the, remember the housing crash? Yeah, well, the world is still here, isn't it? The earth didn't open up and all of us get sucked into it, did it? We're all still here, right? Some of us made it a little more successful than others, but we're all here, so calm down. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to lose your job. You're not going to lose your house. You know, like I said, you're going to pay a little bit more <clears throat> for your iPhone. You're going to pay a little bit more for your food and, you know, your everyday. We're going to pay more. I mean, let's get real. We're going to pay more. Yeah, your 401k, yeesh, it's not going to look too good. But it'll all end eventually, and we'll be back to normal. All right, so brothers, love you. Let's start again. Just chill and kill it. Get back to wives and lives. So subscribe below, press the bell. You get automatic negotiate notification when I do this show. The greatest show on earth, greatest show in the multiverse. So my name is Shamar Clark. Love talking money, love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. So until tomorrow, brothers, thank you for having my, thank you for having me in your home. Boom, I shall see you tomorrow. My name is Shamar Clark. Look, look, fuck stick. If you don't recognize already, Shit, how does Shamari know? Dick, because I'm always on duty. Bang! I'm always on duty. Over and out.